So I'm here to tell you today about this, which is a little side project that I've been working on. If you like macro photography or you like 3D printing, then you should stick around to hear a little bit more about this. This is the EOS M50. It's a Canon, of course, and it's basically a small, lightweight mirrorless camera, and I bought it to replace GoPros when filming videos like this one, just because I really prefer the image quality of this camera, especially in low light conditions where my old GoPro suffers. When I first picked up this camera, I immediately noticed how small and lightweight it is, and I thought to myself, man, I want to carry this thing everywhere, especially for things like macro photography. And this is my favorite macro photography lens. It's the Laowa 25 millimeter, 2.5 to one to five to one. What that means is 2.5X to 5X magnification, which is insane. Most macro lenses only go to one to one magnification. So this really is a super macro lens. And I love the challenge of shooting handheld images around the 2.5 to 3.5 to one magnification. The only problem, as any macro photographer will know, is that macro setups, especially super macro, require a lot of light. Normally, you are carrying a large speed light, something like this, but this kind of defeats the point of a small travel macro setup, especially when you factor in the large diffuser that would go on here and connect the two. This really is no longer a small setup and it certainly is not travel friendly. And so instead, what I did was I 3D printed a little diffuser. And this diffuser comes in a few parts. This part right here, which attaches to the bayonet on the front of this Laowa lens. Then you have your diffusers. I printed these out of flexible TPU, so you can crumple them up and they'll kind of spring back. Same with this guy. And there are two of them. So this big one I have as the top, and then I've got this little small one. You can set it up like that to provide some bottom diffusion, or you can rotate it, have the two of them nested like that to give you a little bit more diffusion on the top if you want. Then when you have the configuration how you want it, you just take the top nut, is what I'm calling it, and you screw it down. Both the threaded base and the nut have these wide flanges on them, and those wide flanges are intended to provide some rigidity to your diffusion material. Your light source is the pop-up flash, and I have found that on full blast, the pop-up flash here has plenty of power for everything up to about 3.5 to one magnification, if I don't wanna go above about ISO 400 or ISO 600. And for me, that's 10, that uh, is where I usually stick for ISO on this camera. The cool thing about this, I'm not selling this or anything, is I'm going to put all of the design files for this, not just the 3D printable parts, but literally the design files. So you can take those and change them and edit them however you want. There's gonna be a link in the description. So you can probably improve this and make it even better than I have, or make it fit the lenses that you want at home. Because admittedly, this is a pretty niche lens. It's incredibly powerful, but it's difficult to shoot with and not very many people have the patience for that. Hey everybody, so I actually had to stop filming on campus. I had a campus security officer come up to me. Some faculty member had called me in and basically was pissed that I was recording on campus where I guess I need a permit. So instead, we are out here. We're gonna shoot at 2.5 to three to one magnification. Hopefully we'll see something and you'll be able to see that it's actually a pretty adequate setup for even this level of super macro. So this is a hibiscus plant and you can see that it's being eaten and I can see here that it is covered in aphids. There's a lot of ants on this as well. The ants basically domesticate the aphids. And usually a thing like this is a good place to find ladybugs, of course to find ants. And if you're interested in shooting aphids, that um, can be a good opportunity as well. These ants are moving pretty quickly right there. Just rotating the flower very gently and looking for them in my viewfinder. When I do see them in my viewfinder, that is when I'm going to just inch a little bit closer to them. Oh, jumping spider. It might actually be a lynx spider. Oh wow, there's actually, this is a lynx spider that is hunting a jumping spider. Come on over here. So if you can see, Right there is the lynx spider, and right on the underside of that leaf to the left, there is a tiny, tiny jumping spider. You can actually see it working its way around the corner. There it is. 
and that lynx spider is hunting it. So we're gonna see if we can get a photo of either the tiny jumper or that lynx spider. Okay, it's actually starting to rain. Lynx spider ran off. There's one more jumper though. So he just moved onto this little tiny branch. If you can see him on there. So there he is, he's moving down towards my fingers. And we're gonna try one more time to get a good photo of him. Okay, I think that may have been it, let's see. I am pretty happy with that. I'm gonna put this guy back right where I found him, right up here. There we go. And I think we're gonna call it a day. So overall, hopefully you'll see through the photos that the diffusion on this setup is pretty darn good. And if you want more diffusion, you can rotate this bottom one to nest underneath the top. Also, frankly, you can just 3D print or design whatever sort of diffusers you want. My goal for this is just to help people who have this specialty lens to be able to actually have a diffuser that works with this because a lot of the ones with elastic don't like to stick to the front of this lens and they end up knocking around the aperture ring. Personally, I really love this setup. It's super lightweight and it's small and I don't have to carry a speed light so I can fit the entire thing in a relatively small backpack. So with that, I'm Austin. This has been yet another photography video on what is becoming more and more a photography channel instead of a science channel. But I'm okay with that if you guys are. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.